carrier optical capacity is expanding to support the need for more. More rich data like video, consumer voice, consumer and business broadband. Not a day goes by without a headline about some new service offering, and all require flexible, scalable, and cost-effective provisioning. That's where DWDM comes in. Evolved from serving only as a long-haul application, it is today's service convergence point, supporting Sonnet while also taming the rapid growth of Ethernet, enabling the WAN while also driving enterprise and campus LAN applications, allowing the remote provisioning of a new wavelength and even sub-wavelength circuits from across the furthest points in a carrier class network. The next generation IP network is upon us. The biggest application we see service providers dealing with today is this whole advent of video, telco video, whether it's telco TV, IPTV, video on demand. This whole insurgence of, of video into the telecom network is brand new for the industry and is going to have a tremendous impact on how telecom providers engineer their networks, what types of equipment they, they deploy into their networks, and how they view their networks, um, not just near term, but over the next five years. If you look at, say, the top 25 service providers, and there's different ways of measuring them, I think without question at this stage, almost every one of them has made a commitment to a next generation IP network. Uh, originally, they started to look at that maybe as a cost-saving exercise, have less networks, so more, more services over a single network infrastructure. But with the advent of really broadband and triple play services becoming um, available to the consumer, they've really started to rapidly uh, migrate towards these new services. The old network and most of today's optical network is based on Sonnet or SDH. It was designed to handle telephone traffic. That's very predictable and known and grows slowly. The opposite is true today of, of the traffic. It's quickly changing, growing fast, and you cannot always predict where it's going to come from or where it needs to go to. DWDM is the technology that allows very high capacities, but also with new ROADM, Rotom technologies, that WDM layer becomes dynamic and provisionable and can be reconfigured according to the changing traffic patterns. Currently, service providers have multiple services on multiple networks. We call them overlay networks. As Rotom technologies become available, and especially as in the form of Cisco's MSTP product, it has allowed them to use the MSTP as a convergence layer and therefore to take away these overlay networks and converge them onto one transport, which is supported by the MSTP and the Rotom technology in MSTP. You know, the multi-service platform as a building block of any network really relies on, I think, two key components. First of all, the affordability of the product, and that is both in terms of economics, cost of acquisition, and total cost of ownership. Uh, and then secondly, the flexibility of the product, the product to have multiple interfaces, to have multiple different functions or services running within the platform simultaneously. You know, Cisco has put a lot of forethought into designing a product that's exceedingly flexible. Many other service providers have compartmentalized business units that really limit the ability to come in and integrate all of this functionality into one product. Cisco seems to have broken that down and be able to offer a truly integrated product. Cisco has been hard at work evolving its successful optical networking solution, and now it has significantly raised the stakes in the fourth major MSTP launch, a launch accomplished thanks to Cisco's tight collaboration with over 500 of its customers. We did a survey at Heavy Reading of 72 service providers around the world, and we asked them about their migration plans to packet optical networking. What we found is that this migration is definitely happening now. Service providers clearly stated that the old MSPP approach, which is based on SANA and TDM, is not working for them, and that they're clearly interested in, in moving to a newer packet optical networking platform. The flexibility that service providers need in order to reach the customer is in the access space. And so the reconfigurability, as well as the flexibility of the MSTP platform is uniquely suited for that. A lot of our thinking 
in the long haul space is really around what we call IP over WDM. And uh, our Cisco's approach to that is to be able to utilize more and more of the routing platforms to drive the backbone for the long haul applications. So with this new release of the MSTP, we're offering firstly to build on our success on the Rotom platform, the ability to do mesh networks with the wavelength cross connect. Up from two degrees in the past, we can go scalably up to eight degrees of a mesh network. We've really ethernet enabled WDM, and that's an industry first. And what that means is we've brought all of the carrier class capabilities of the MSTP in terms of resiliency, reliability, reconfigurability to data, which is the service that our service provider customers are looking to offer. And that's what the Ethernet cross bundle allows them to do. Many service providers believe that they have to have a dual or multi-vendor strategy to keep their vendors honest and keep them competitive. While our relationship with Cisco is much more cooperative as opposed to adversarial. We've been involved in a number of product developments and I think it's really been that cooperative spirit that has allowed Cisco to continue to lower the cost per megabit mile that we have to pay and the routing cost per megabit as well. All of those cost reductions allow Cogent to continue to be the price leader in the market and do so profitably. The networks are changing, the traffic types are changing very rapidly, and the winners, I think, in the next generation transport market are the ones who hear what the customers say and deliver a seamless sort of A to C provisioning capability that really maps to different types of architectures and topologies. As customers continue to demand rich broadband data services, service providers must rapidly create more flexible, efficient transport layers. To companies like Cisco that are building the optical tools to support this, that's old news.